Hey, you ever see the notebook? <laughs> Me too. The fingerprint on my fucking lens? Mother. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. I'm Adam, a.k.a. Uh, 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 <clears throat> Let's talk about the most romantic movie ever made. No, not that one. No. 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 Let's talk about The Notebook. The Notebook came out in 2004 and is the heartwarming tale of a spineless pussy who develops an unhealthy obsession with a self-absorbed cunt who doesn't give a shit about anybody but herself. The movie The Notebook is based on the novel The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks who, for the uninitiated, means we are in for a fucking treat. It was also directed by Nick Cassavetes, who, for those who don't know, played Dietrich in Face Off, but more importantly was in a quickly forgotten Charlie Sheen movie called The Wraith where he played such a faggot. No. A fucking badass. Anyway, he took a turn in his career and wanted to make this fucking thing. This movie starts off at breakneck speed with almost three full minutes of an old man rowing a slow boat in slow motion until he reaches an old lady. When he arrives, we realize that he's James Garner from the Rockford Files, but he's not doing anything cool. He's here to read to the old lady. Read? Yes, read. Uh, the old lady has no fucking idea who he is, but his name is Duke. Uh, spoiler alert, this is, this is supposed to be revealed at the end for the retarded people that couldn't fucking figure out what was going on in the movie. Uh, James Garner is playing the old version of Ryan Gosling. They're the same guy, but for some reason, when James Garner is old, his name is Duke, but when he's young, his name is Noah, and they never address the fact why his fucking name changes. But we're supposed to just deal with it. And uh, for the duration of this, I'm just going to, they're Noah and Duke, Noah Duke, Noah Duke, Noah Duke, Noah Duke. So I'm going to refer to them as Old No Dukey and Young No Dukey. And the old lady who's Played by Jenna Rollins. You think? She's the old version of Rick. Rachel McAdams, who plays a girl named Allie. For short, I'm going to call her Moles because Rachel McAdams is riddled with them. Like mel melanoma is serious. I don't like. She, she's she's a pretty woman. Kind of unsightly. Yeah, that's just my opinion though. Some guys like pickles. I don't. I don't like pickles. I don't like moles. Some guys do. Whatever. Moving forward, we're here to read. We're here to read the story. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fly through this. Let's just hit the big points. So it starts off where uh, fucking young no dookie is at a carnival with uh, the weird kid from Unhappily Ever After. And from afar, he spots uh, moles rather than bumper cars. And he's like, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna be obsessed with her. And he does. He becomes obsessed with her. He goes up to her and he's like, hey, you wanna dance with me? And she's like, nah. And he's like, fucking. Damn it. And he walks away. And then the, she's like, she's like, did you see how close he was to my face? Because he was. He's like, you want to dance with me? And she's like, fuck, no. Nah. And, and her friend's like, and that's, that's, that's fucking no dookie. You know, that's how no dookie. We're all creepy and disrespectful of people's personal space. But he's a fucking dreamboat. Isn't that endearing? Yes. So anyway, young no dookie doesn't take that laying down. So when she boards the Ferris wheel with her boyfriend, he fucking spits. Spears are like Goldberg. I've never watched wrestling, but I think that's a pretty good reference. This is fuck. Goddamn. Uh, quick homework assignment. Uh, fellas, lesbians, whoever, I want you to try this out in public. I want you to spear a woman as hard as you can and let me know how far the court orders you to stay away from her. So anyway, as they're going up, the car and he's like, hey, no dookie, you can't do that. And he stops it and he's like, you didn't pay. And the no dookie's like, hey, you know, I'm fucking trying to harass a bitch over here. What do you want from me? I'll pay you on Tuesday. And he's like, yay. So they're like up in the sky in the car and he says, I'm gonna stop it. I'm gonna tell no dookie, you can't have more than two people on there and it's you and the girl you're harassing and her boyfriend. You." didn't pay, so I'm going to stop this thing when you're in the sky because you're breaking the rules and you're not supposed to do that and there's no way you're going to fix that since you're up in the fucking sky and what I'm doing doesn't make any fucking sense. Because I'm only doing this to show just how fun and endearing you are, Ryan Gosling. So Ryan Gosling's like, go out with me. And she's like, nah. And he's like, all right. And he jumps out and he's hanging on the Ferris wheel and he's like, well, now go out with me. And she's like, the still no. And... He's like, fine. So to win her over, he says, fine. If you don't go out with me, I'm going to kill myself. 
And she's like, no, don't kill yourself. I want to, I want to, uh, side note real quick while you watch this scene. If you ever watch this movie, if you watch this scene, take note of the boyfriend who just watches this all go down. This man is actively stealing your bitch right in front of you and you are doing nothing. His penis is right in front of you. Punch this prick in the dick thing is what the fuck? Anyway, it works. Fast forward, they're in love, they have awkward sex scenes, like the most annoying sex scene in movie fucking history. Uh, we meet their parents. Uh, Joan Allen is married to a fucking wicked mustache and they're super rich. Uh, they're Mole's parents and they hate Ryan Gosling because he's poor and he's a fucking logger and he's disgusting. Even though his friend is in the same position as him and he's going out with a girl that's part of Allie's family, her cousin or something, but they don't care about him. He's fine. That Gosling fella, he's got too much spirit. He's too fun and endearing. And we don't fucking like him because he's poor and fun and endearing. And we also meet Sam Shepard, who's honestly the, uh, I like Sam Shepard in this movie, but he's Sam Shepard. So, I mean, that's a given. That's a point. Like if you get Sam Shepard in your movie, you automatically you get a one. You get a one. Because Sam Shepard is, a, he's, uh, he's the dad you always wanted. I think. <laughs> I never had a dad. He's fucking cool. He's warm. He's welcoming. He loves Allie. He's, he's fucking, he's a cool guy, man. He's charming. He's fucking Sam Shepard. Anyway, he's awesome. He's no Dookie's dad. And he's, 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 and Allie's parents suck. And they got this fucking adorable relationship. For the entire time, Ryan Gosling, who, again, like, you know, not really. I'm not what you would say into the dude, but come on, man. You pretty much pick up any chick in town, guy. Uh, he spends the whole time just being like, oh, uh, you don't have to love me for me. I'll be whatever you want me to be. I'll be whatever you want me to be. Uh, you know, forget all the, forget, forget all the experiences in my entire life that have led up to this moment of me being who I am, because fuck that. I will give up everything that I am as a person uh, for you to accept me, not for me, just in general. Uh, like this adorable little scene here. Do you think like, in, do you think in another life I could have been a Virginia Ralph? What? You know, like the incarnation. Yeah, I believe for that. I believe whatever you want me to believe. Yay! If you're 14, then I'm 14. Yay! Fucking relationship is disgusting. I and mean, we never even find out like any of his interests. Things we really know about this dude is that he likes laying in the street for fun. Not like the program with James Conn where the college kids lay in the street and they fucking <laughs> hugging a real tight on the line because so the cars don't kill him. And people saw that movie and in real life they ran out and they fucking tried it and they died. And that scene was exciting in the movie and outside of the movie because people were fucking dying because of it. No, it's not like that. So his interests are stupid. And he's got a dream of... Uh, remodeling a dream house to have dreams in it. Anyway, that's it. We don't know anything about him as a person. Uh, we soon find out that Allie, Allie doesn't, Allie doesn't live. In, we're in Charleston, and Allie doesn't live there. She's just, just like summering there. Her family summers there. And uh, one night, No Dookie decides, "Hey, let's be super cute. Uh, you want to know something cute? Is I want to fucking, I want to take you to this uh, uh, condemned plantation to fuck you." She's like, yeah, that's endearing as fuck. Of course I'll lose my virginity in a condemned plantation. In an abandoned former house of slavery, of course you can pop my fucking cherry there. So anyway, they're doing it super annoying. She talks the whole fucking time. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? What are you thinking about? What are you thinking about? She's showing up for moles and he's still fucking, he's still going for it, you know? Props to no dookie, because whatever, man. He's a dreamboat logger. He, he's dreamy. He's manly. I mean, it, it sounds like I'm, I, I'm not attracted to him. I'm just saying he's got, he's got some attributes. I myself wouldn't fuck him, but I wouldn't say no if he wanted to braid my hair. So anyway, they stay out too late, and fucking Allie's parents are like, fuck this, we're going back home tomorrow. Uh, we're leaving town, and there's nothing you fucking crazy kids can do about it. Fuck Ryan Gosling, because he's poor. And Ryan Gosling leaves, he's like, oh, they don't like me because I'm poor. And he turns around, and he's like, let's break up, we're gonna break up. And she's like, fuck you then, let's break up then, bitch. And then he's driving off, she's like, we're not really breaking up, are we? But anyway, the next day, she moves back to where the fuck she's from, New York or something, I forget. And then No Dookie's like, nah, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write to her every day to show her that I still care. And I regret the fucking mean things that I said that fucking one night when the parents were dogging me for being a fucking bro. So he writes her every day, and Joan Allen. The evil mom. She intercepts the letters every day for a year. Uh, I want to go on over this. James Garner says, hey, he wrote her uh, once a day for an entire year. 
That's 365. Thank you, James Garner. So, since Moles isn't getting the letters after 365 of them, no dookie's like, well, I guess I'm gonna pick up and move on with my life as people do. And him and his buddy, him and his logging buddy Finn, they move to Atlanta together because he can drop all the nothing he's got to go to Atlanta with Finn, but not to New York with his chick who has a future. So anyway, in Atlanta they do some stuff and then World War II happens and he decides he's gonna drop all the nothing he's got in Atlanta and move to Europe with Finn and, you know, fight some, I don't know, Nazis. And then Finn, something happens to Finn and he, he's either dead or retarded because he's just laying in the snow staring off in space and not bleeding or anything. You can't tell. He's either dead or retarded, but either way, it's very obvious that no dookie has picked the wrong moving partner because Moles is off in New York living it up and she meets uh, Cyclops from the X-Men. That's right, James Marsden, gonna call him Cyclops because I don't remember his name in Hop. So we're watching this movie and we're like, all right, I know that I'm supposed to want Moles and no Dookie. Like, you know, we know they're gonna get back together. But how? So we meet Cyclops and we're thinking, what's wrong with this guy? Something's gotta be, nothing, nothing, nothing else. This dude is a fucking winner, dude. Like, oh my God, he is the dream husband for any daughter. He's fucking sweet, he's supportive, he's rich. He's just all around nice fucking guy. He's an incredible fucking dude. Cyclops is fucking awesome, man. Throw some titties in the vagina on this guy, I'm fucking marrying him. He's fucking, he's a 10. He's a fucking 10. You see his blue eyes? It's like getting lost in the fucking sea. This guy's got it all. So anyway, we, we fast track it through their relationship and then now they're getting married uh, all the while. No dookie, he's back from the war. He's fixing up the fucking dream house, the condemned plantation where they fuck. He's fixed it up and he meets some widow who, yeah, this lady's got baggage because her husband's dead, but she's hot. She's hot. No moles. I'm gonna call her a solid 8.5. I'm gonna throw Rachel McAdams a 7. Those moles are knocking like two points off her for me. Call it maybe it's 6. I don't know, man. Those things would be distracting. Did you see her season of True Detective? There are some times when the shadows cast off those things, like the sun setting over the cascades. <laughs> so anyway, he's got a solid 8.5 on this chick. She's hot. He treats like shit. He just pouts and gets drunk. He just gets drunk and pouts. He's gotta get like licensing for his dream house. So he's gotta go into town and he sees moles walking around. So he's like, bus driver stop. And the bus driver's like, I'm not gonna stop. And he plays with the door handle. He's like, all right, I have to stop. And he gets off and he somehow finds her through closed blinds. The blinds, I mean, they're open. But the down, you know, you know what I mean. You know what the fuck I mean. Somehow he tracks her to this restaurant, looks in between the blinds. Oh my god, there she is. Oh, dream. And she's fucking kissing Cyclops. Bow, 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 bow. Ah, ah. So we get a shot of him through the blinds, crying, crying. And then he's laying in bed with his 8.5. I don't remember her name. The widow. I'm gonna call her the widow 8.5. So he's laying in bed with widow 8.5, getting drunk, pouting. She's like, "What are you thinking about?" He's like. Shut up. I was gonna say they have a they have a messed up relationship, but it's only because he's a fucking pussy. He just cries. What are you thinking about? I don't know, cause I'm barely a fucking person. And then this fucking self-absorbed cunt, Moles, shows up at his fucking dream house. She's like, "Hey, what's going on?" And he's like, "No, what are you doing here?" Earlier in the movie, we, we we find out that he's broken inside. He finds out about her, and he's broken inside. So he, to show that he's broken, he grows beards. That's what broken guys do. They grow beards, shroud sadness on his face. So anyway, she shows up and he's like, oh, and it's awkward. And she's like, man, and he's like, oh. and she's like, nah, I'm just gonna go. And she gets in her car. She gets in her big old fucking steel car and she accidentally bumps into some Lincoln logs and it just totals her vehicle. Decimated. Car won't start. She hits these fucking sticks. It just, boop. And then her car just no longer works. So she goes inside and they, they have some drinks. They have some drinkies and they're eating. And she's like, I think you'd really like my husband. Oh, is that fucking, oh, is that, yeah? You, you think I like your husband? You think I like your husband? Think about killing myself every day. Can I meet him? And then she's like, okay, I'm gonna go. She hops on her car and goes, because it fucking works now. Like nobody ever, nobody ever fucking worked on the car. She just hopped the car that was decimated. She just hops in it and she fucking takes off. Fast forward, James Marsden is crazy supportive. <laughs> he's Fucking, he's perfect, man. Like, I'm rooting for this guy. What the fuck? We also know nothing about this dude, other than the fact that he's fucking awesome. Ryan Gosling cries all the time. James Marsden, have you ever seen this dude fucking smile? Have you ever seen James Marsden fucking smile? Try to be sad when he's smiling. Have you ever seen Ryan Gosling smile? It's just, you know, whatever. It's all right. It's all right. I'm gonna give James Marsden a 10 on the smile. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give Gosling a, wait, what the fuck am I doing? What am I doing?
So anyway, she leaves poor, sweet fucking James Marsden to go back over to Crybaby No Dookie's house, and they get fucking shit-faced hammered and read poetry, and she's like, hey, remember how awesome it was when we fucked? And he's like, <laughs> and then he's like, you want to see something neato? And they get in a boat. And he rows her through this river that has like 10,000 geese in it, which I guess is supposed to be romantic. I don't know. I don't know. Is that romantic? Am I out of touch? Is 10,000 geese romantic? Because from what I know of geese, they're fucking terrifying and disgusting. Have you ever gone to a park full of geese with just a little bit of bread? They either attack you or they shit this weird butt slime all over your stuff. They're fucking gross. Is 10,000 geese romantic? Whenever nothing scary happens and they get through the 10,000 geese and it's mystical and it's full of whimsy, it starts raining. That's the scary thing. It's starts raining and then I don't know if people notice this but this is a key scene for me this scene perfectly encapsulates everything that's wrong with fucking Rachel McAdams in this motherfucking movie he's fucking breaking his back to tow this fucking boat into shore a boat that could easily be carried by two people but it's big it's awkward it's a fucking, it's a fucking boat he's breaking his fucking spine to drag this thing in what does she do she gets out of it puts a coat on she fucking runs away. Nah, hey, nah, don't worry about it. Run along, run along. I'll take, I'll, I'll take care of the boat. Thank you, thank you, moles. Thanks, moles. Thanks, moles. Good looking out, moles. So anyway, they go inside and they fuck, right? They fuck, they fuck, they fuck, they fuck. Uh, side note, this is sex scene number two. Zero nudity in this movie. What the fuck, man? Know your audience, man. You know guys are gonna be dragged along to this. Show us half a nip. Show us half a nip. Come on. No self-respecting man is actually sitting here for this movie. Throw us a bone. Anyway, during the sex scene, there's all these slow fade cuts that cut to the same exact angle. It'd be like me like this. All right, so if I cut it like that, you're assuming, man, this dude must have been sitting there for like ever. But nah, it was like, it was like what? I don't know, I haven't edited this yet. We'll call it three seconds. But with those fake cuts, it makes it look like I was here for like a fucking decade, right? But it, like, I, I can't grow a beard anyway, so I'd still look the same in a decade. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. They do all these little fake cuts. Same angle. So from what I gather, they just fucked for like 10 years. Oh my God, big ass booger. Can you believe that? So, was that in the video this whole time? Whatever, I'm fucking leaving it if it was. Got another one? Good God, man. So anyway, they fuck, they fuck, they fuck. They fuck for what I assume to be a decade. And he makes her a painting room, which shows, oh, he supports her in her dreams. James Marsden also supported you in your dreams, you goddamn cunt. The next morning, uh, uh, no dookie goes somewhere, I don't know. She, she wakes up alone, I forget where he goes. Work? I don't think he has a job. I don't forget. Anyway, but he's gone. There's a knock at the door. Who is it? I don't know. I'm over here at my side dude's house, cheating on my fucking husband, uh, and I'm butt ass naked. I better put a sheet on and hold it with the hand that's rocking my big ass fucking wedding ring that my husband who fucking loves me bought me. I'm holding it together with my big old wedding hand and answer the door butt ass naked at the house that belongs to the dude I'm cheating on my husband with. And who is it? It's my mom. It's my mom. Anyway, so then we find out that mom doesn't want her to be with Ryan Gosling. Why not? Well, she must have a good reason, right? No, she fucking doesn't. It makes zero fucking sense, all right? Once upon a time, mom also had a similar thing with a fucking logger. Anyway, I used to love him. Loved him more than your dad. Super passionate relationship. Fucking loved him. But my parents hated him, right? And I regret that every fucking day of my life while I look at your dad, who I love, but not as much as this fucking dude. And, uh, well, I don't want that for you. So she wants her daughter to be just as miserable as she is. They tell this big, long fucking story and it makes zero fucking sense. You don't want your daughter to be fucking happy. You don't want her to get what you fucking missed out on. Joan Allen, cunt. See where Moles got her cunt from. That's a fucking cunty move. Is that not cunty? That's cunty. That's cunty. Is that not cunty? That's cunty. That's cunt move. Cunt move, mom. Thanks, mom. Thanks, mom. Joan Allen, mom. Not my mom. Hi, mom. So mom drops her back off at No Dookie's house and No Dookie's like, so you chilling with mom, huh? She's like, yeah, full life. And he's like, so what you gonna do about your husband, man? You gonna tell him? And she's like, ah. I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, what the fuck, bitch? I hate you. And she's like, yeah, I hate you too. Let's break up. Yeah, fucking duh, right? And then she goes to James Mars and James Mars is like, yo, I know you've been cheating on me with you, dude, but you know, hey, you can't stop true love. I know you guys dig each other, but I want you too, so I'll do whatever it takes. Half of me at this point is like, damn, James Mars is super like, how are you gonna do this to James Mars? Look how nice he is. Look how nice he is. And the other half of me is like, the what? The fuck? What the, you fuck? what the fuck? You're a 10, James Marsden. You're a 10. This hooker over here doesn't deserve your icy blues, baby bubba. Come on, James Marsden. Anyway, he's like, I'm going to leave it up to you to choose. And then, oh, does she choose? She's like, yeah. And before you find out who exactly she chooses, 
the old lady. Old moles. Old moles. Oh my God. I just realized this as I'm, I didn't realize it as I was watching, I'm realizing it as I'm talking about it now. Old moles doesn't have any moles. Something to think about. I don't know. Hmm? No moles. Was it an oversight? Or are they implying that Allie's sanity was kept inside her moles? Because once she lost all the moles, Bat shit crazy. Back to where we were. Young Moles is supposed to be choosing, who am I gonna pick? Am I gonna pick dreamy, rich, super supportive, and super handsome James Marsden? Or am I gonna pick cries all the time and has a terrible temper and hates me, Ryan Gosling? And at this point, Old Moles is like, I remember. Did I mention that this bitch is senile as fuck? It was us. And I Does she chooses Gosling? Why? Who fucking knows? Anyway, the old people cry. Ah, oh, I fucking missed you so much. Ah, oh, I missed you too. It's good that I'm back in my head. Yay. And he's like, yeah, I'm glad you're fucking here too. Do you want to dance? And she's like, hey, don't touch me. What the fuck? Who the fuck are you? I think I booped my pants. She's nuts again. I don't know. No dookie has a heart attack. But he lives. And they're in the hospital. But now she's in a normal hospital instead of the convalescent home. And he has a room like down the hall from her. But you think, you think the people who have heart attacks will be in a different section of the hospital than the people that are just fucking nuts. But anyway, he gets up in the middle of the night and he's like, you know, he was a nurse and the nurse is like, where are you going, bro? And he's like, ah. Uh, she's like, you're gonna go see that bitch, but I can't let you see that bitch. But I'm gonna imply that I have to go downstairs. Winkity winky, wink, 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 wink. I have to go downstairs and I won't see you go and visit her. But I'm clearly allowing you to go do so even though it's the middle of the night and I have an entire wing of patients who are sleeping. And earlier she caused a huge ruckus and chaos because she's crazy and was super loud. I'm gonna go ahead and not let you go in there. Anyway, he goes in there. They remember each other again. Well, he, she remembers it. He, he, he always remembers her. It's the only thing he thinks of because he's only here to serve the purpose of Valley. Good night. They cuddle up in bed together because they know each other. You know, this is super dangerous because she's not. Anyway, they lay down together and he's like, she's like, I, you know, uh, good night. And he says, yep. I'll be seeing ya. Yeah, and hell, we get it, you're gonna fucking die. If you didn't catch that that was foreshadowing to the fact that they're about to die, then you're fucking dumb. Anyway, they do. They fucking die. Let me explain what's wrong with this. First of all, let's just get out of the way. They, okay, it's a mystical coincidence. Is that what this is? Because <sighs> the nurse comes and they're fucking holding hands and they're cuddling and they're dead. They're dead, they died at the same time. How improbable is this timing unless he intentionally killed them both, which would have made sense because this dude lived his entire adult life obsessing over this fucking woman, okay? Obsessing over her, no matter how wrong she did him, okay? No matter what she did to him, he did everything. He was willing to be whatever she wanted him to be. Now she's gone. She's basically gone, okay? She's nuts. This is not Allie. She's, this is just some shell of some lady who shits her pants. So wouldn't it make sense if he were to have intentionally killed them both? Murder-suicide? Wouldn't that make fucking sense? Because he's old, he's got fucking nothing left to live for since the only thing he lived for was her. And now she's fucking nuts. She's not even there. She barely fucking exists. She barely exists. She's barely in there. She comes about five minutes a week. He pops in, oh, hey, look, I'm here. Oh. And she's gone. But that's not what happened. They never go into that. So what we are to assume is that destiny just had it in the cards for these two to live miserably for each other for their whole lives and then just happen to die within minutes or a couple of hours of each other, I'm assuming. Uh, let's not, let's, or maybe at the exact same time. Who fucking knows? They don't say. They go to sleep. They wake up dead. Maybe this guy's leaking in the hospital. I don't know. Don't know anything about the other patient. Are the other patient's dead? That would make sense too. Oh my God, but the nurse is walking around. She doesn't seem, seem lethargic. Nah, these people are just fucking dead. Why? Why are they dead? You don't fucking know. I mean, this guy did just have a heart attack, but he seemed fine when he was wandering around the fucking halls. And what's her major health issue? She doesn't seem to have any other than the fact that she's just good old fashioned nuts. Did she forget how to breathe? And maybe he didn't fully recover from his heart attack and you know, just fucking, it bit him in the night. No, none of that is true. What actually happened is that Nicholas Sparks is a terrible fucking writer because I can only assume that this is how the book ends too. I assume that Nicholas Sparks is just a lazy fucking writer. And he got to the end of the romantic part of his story that he laid out. He got to the end of this stupid shitty romance that he wrote and he's like, how am I gonna end this? Maybe everybody just dies. I'll just have everybody die. The end. 
That's how it works. So, all in all, is this a terrible fucking movie? Yeah, sort of. I mean, the directing isn't that bad, other than a few continuity issues. Uh, the acting, I didn't really have a problem with the acting. I mean, these people are working with the best people that they have, which isn't much. These are vapid, hollow characters, and we're supposed to believe in this romance when these two literally have nothing in common. Nothing, except for that they both like fucking each other. But they're both attractive people. You like having sex with hot people? I like having sex with hot people too. Wow, what a fucking coincidence. You and I destined to be together. It's that obvious. It feels more like when you're a teenager, that first person that you really get that, that strong infatuation for, I mean, they, they envelop every one of your thoughts and you can't wait to see them again. Uh, but you probably don't even know their middle name or what they're into. You just, you're really attracted to them. You can't wait to see them and learn about them. You are infatuated. You think you're in love. You think you're dying in love. Kind of like Romeo and Juliet. These people knew each other for what, fucking two days? All right, it's not fucking romantic. It's not love, it's infatuation. But this is more than that because these two to drag this fucking, I was gonna call it a dead dog, but this thing was never even fucking alive. These people drag this thing out all the way into their senior years until one of them fucking checks out and the dude still fucking drags this shit on, man. You're about to die, bro. Live your fucking life. Go back to fucking Widow 8.5. And the fact that James Marsden's character is so fucking likable makes this whore, makes this fucking whore's actions that much more detestable. It makes her that much more unlikable. And I would assume that this movie is, uh, I mean, it's obviously geared towards women. So I would assume that she should be the most relatable character, but everything she does is just downright, it's just fucking dirty. She's a fucking cunt. She cares about nobody but herself. Why does she do this to these two guys? James Marsden is extremely likable. Ryan Gosling is, you know, whatever. When he's during his charmer stage, yeah, he's a cool guy. He seems pretty, he seems cool enough. But anyway, she just treats these dudes like fucking dog shit. Being a movie that I interpret as being one that is supposed to appeal to the fantasies of young girls to women and everywhere in between in that spectrum. I assume Allie is supposed to be the one that the uh, audience member is supposed to be relating to because there's nobody to relate to as as a, a um, heterosexual cisgender male such as myself. My question is who's relating to this fucking broad? Aside from the whores who already held a questionable position on the subject of monogamy before seeing this dog shit, Who's relating to this bitch? What is the appeal? Is it just the thought of that Prince Charming waiting on the sidelines for his entire life until you finally decide to stop being a slut and give him a shot? Cause that's what this is. She left this motherfucker on the sidelines for seven fucking years and then still dicked him around. What is your problem, bitch? This movie makes me angry. Whew, this movie gets me hot. Gets me as hot as Joan Allen gets me hot in a different fucking way. Anyway, that's that. Did you like The Notebook? If so, Comment below and tell me how uh, was the first time you got your period. Did you hate it? Well, let me know your favorite parts down below. And if you dug this, throw me a thumb. And if you didn't, well, hey, I don't know what to say. You know, we all got different tastes. I don't like moles. And I don't like pickles. And if you did like this and you want to see more, uh, subscribe. And that's that. Uh, and honestly, thanks for sticking around to hear me uh, ramble on about this fucking movie. Uh, really, I appreciate it. Thank you. Cue my outro card, me. You knew this would happen. Oh, so now I'm a tramp. <laughs>